we just, we didn't think, we just ran. And everybody ran. She lost her shoes, she, you know, it was horrible. You're just running on adrenaline, I guess. Ex exactly right, exactly did, right. Uh, I know it's incidental at this point, but did you, did you still have your bag? You hung on to the back. I said, well, I, again, you never know what people Well, I said, well, I don't have any money to do and how they're going to Yeah, how am I going to get, you know, if I have right. to need money for anything or my identification, we knew we weren't going to make it back in the building. And again, at that very moment, it was, it was so confusing. There were some people in the building, some people on my floor, some people not. I didn't, there was no announcement. We didn't know. Did Kathleen. you see people outside, like rescue workers or policemen or firemen, oh, yeah, directing we, you, telling you to move on? Not or? A, that was a little too early. You know, like we were out, again, very early. And, um, but we, you know, there was tons of people going, you know, going up the street. Um, there were tons of um, emergency vehicles, um, signs, everything. And what I was confused about, there were cars still coming towards our way. And we're like, they really should not be coming this way. They should be off the road, taxis, trucks, everybody, people walking that way. Well, like, you know, are you insane? <laughs> Get away, you know. So. And these weren't emergency vehicles. They're just... Uh, no, yeah, just cars going that way. And I don't know, you know, I don't know why. Well, the further you, you made it out alive. Me too. Yeah, absolutely. The further you got away from that area, though, when you're walking on the street, what was the reaction of people walking on the street at that point? I mean, did a lot oh. of people seem to know what was going on, or were they oblivious to what was happening? The further happening? away I got, the more people knew. Because when you're in the middle of it, like, we, again, we didn't really know what was going on. So, um, um, and there were a lot of people crying. There were a lot of people in shock. Um, so, you know, I saw, like, one or two women who were, had collapsed. But, you know, luckily there were, were good Samaritans who, you know, were already at her aid mm -hmm. and helping her out. So, um, Right. Well, know. thank you. Just relax a little bit. Oh, yeah. Right yeah. now we're going to take you and make you listen to a, a tape. Uh, Ted Kennedy and Laura Bush were at a hearing on Capitol Hill. And uh, here's what they had to say after they heard about all these attacks. Hello. Good morning. Uh, all of us uh, deplore the acts of terrorism uh, that we have seen in these past minutes. And our hearts reach out to all of those who have suffered, lost their lives, and are injured uh, right now. And all of us reach out as Americans to the brave rescue workers that are attempting to help our fellow citizens. We, uh, out of respect, for those uh, efforts have uh, postponed our uh, hearing uh, this morning. Uh, we underline the point that it is uh, postponed. We are not going to see the business of America uh, deferred because of terrorism, uh, whether it's in education or in any area of uh, public uh, policy. We're looking forward to hearing uh, from the, uh, the First Lady <coughs> on a subject matter which is of central concern to uh, all families in this uh, country and because of her experience and her leadership uh, this committee and the Congress and the American people would have benefited greatly uh, from her comments and we will look forward to an early reappearance by the First Lady for this committee on the subject of uh, early education and Mrs. Bush we recognize uh, you heard from the president this morning, and Senator Kennedy and Senator Gregg and I both uh, join his statement in saying that our hearts and our prayers go out to the victims of this act of terrorism and that uh, our support goes to the rescue workers um, and all of our prayers are with everyone there right now. Thank you all. All right. Uh, there, uh, a, uh Hearing postponed uh, on the Hill uh, by uh, Senator Kennedy and uh, accompanied by uh, First Lady Laura Bush uh, giving their reactions to the tragedies of the morning. Uh, John Rowland? All right, Jim, I'm just trying to make some sense for you about all the, the effects that have happened here and, and across the country because of these terrorist attacks. The hearings in Washington not only postponed, the Capitol evacuated all the major uh, government uh, buildings in uh, Washington, D.C. being evacuated, as well as here in uh, New York, Connecticut, and in New Jersey. The baseball games across the country all postponed for tonight. Uh, these terrorist attacks in Manhattan have shut down the subway lines. They've crippled cell phone service to force the evacuation uh, from Wall Street to the United States. 
United Nations. Lowermen hadn't closed, only emergency uh, people allowed there now. Uh, thousands of people walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. Primary election is called off. Airports are all closed. Trading on Wall Street has been suspended. The United Nations building was, has been evacuated. Offices throughout Manhattan are closed. Kids are being kept in schools because their parents can't, can't get to them. Every payphone in the city, of course, is lined up. Uh, the, uh, uh, the traffic problems are, are incredible, difficult to describe. Hudson River crossings are closed. Uh, going into the city and the, the uh, Jersey Turnpike is closed northbound above Interchange 11 in uh, Woodbridge. Turnpike Authority spokesman says that motorists leaving the city are being waved through the congested toll plazas. Nobody's taking any tolls today. Southbound traffic is allowed over the length of the turnpike. Long Island Railroad service is all the train service into and out of the uh, Penn Station and uh, Flatbush Avenue. Brooklyn uh, uh, service is suspended until further notice. Limited train service from the LIRR, uh, e uh, uh, east of Jamaica Station, limited service between Port Washington and the Flushing Main Street stations. The MTA says there is no subway service into or out of Manhattan, temporarily suspended because of power problems. Buses are, are operating in some cases. Emergency bus service plans are being put into effect. All the bridges, Jim, all the tunnels outbound, with the exception of the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel, at the direction of the governor no fares, as I said, are going to be collected either way. You can get out of Manhattan, you cannot get in, and they're asking you, please don't even try. Jim, back to you. Uh, Ali, thank you very much. Ali, um, John, thank you very much. I'm so used to doing it with my partner in the morning. Uh, Linda, you're talking about some military installations? Yeah, that's right, Jim. I just got off the phone with um, a close uh, contact at uh, Picatinny Arsenal, which is a research facility about an hour outside the city here. It's in Dover. They have closed for the day. Now, as I told you guys earlier, after this thing happened, they immediately went into emergency anti-terrorism briefings. They are still involved in those meetings, and this is a couple of hours afterward. Also, military bases all across the country have been shut down, and they are on full alert today. And, of course, at every military installation right now. They have the anti-terrorism briefings going on. As John Rowland mentioned earlier this morning, the city is on DEPCON 5, a right. state of alert that is the, uh, the most serious just before all-out war. So that's where we are right now as a response uh, to these uh, to these uh, terrorist attacks this morning. Dick Oliver uh, was down in the thick of it earlier this morning. Ali, are you still there? Yes, Jim. Uh, we're at uh, NYU Downtown Hospital. Just to give you an update of the, uh, of the hospital's activities, they've treated more than 250 patients with injuries and breathing and cardiac problems. Uh, the hospital, which as you know, is located in the shadow of the World Trade Center, just a half a dozen blocks away, established a second emergency room and a command post uh, to keep uh, medical personnel advised as to arriving patients. Now, at least three people were dead on arrival at the hospital. Two others had to be transferred to one a severe burn uh, injury. The uh, hospital's president and CEO, Leonard Aubrey, uh, says that uh, Immediate treatment was given to 200 people suffering from cuts, lacerations, and other traumas, some with severe chest pains and uh, smoke inhalation. Meantime, uh, those who arrived at the hospital uh, were given face masks and bottled water, all, uh, all of them, by the way, covered with soot and ash from the debris. The uh, hospital president, who was here in 1993 uh, when the World Trade Center bombing occurred, uh, said the hospital at that time treated about 200 people, uh, but with very milder injuries. He says today's catastrophe was much, much worse. Jim. And I'm sure you've been telling us, uh, in a sense, uh, positive things, in the sense that uh, the injuries that something can be done about. The, uh, the word from the mayor earlier was that he has said he has a sense of the horrendous number of lives lost. We haven't even begun to talk about that yet, about uh, morgue facilities that, that are around, because if you had the two largest office buildings on the island of Manhattan, mm -hmm. both totally demolished, you can't believe, believe, begin to believe the number of lives that must have been lost in that tragedy.